that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot, I get off Hello, and welcome to Progress Attic So today, I'm gonna do some rough electrical in this basement And I'm gonna go over the whole entire process and how I figure out how I install boxes How many do you need, uh, how far apart do they need to be to code and I'm going to show you my methods to ensure that it's ready for sheetrock and that everything is to code. Let's get started. All right, let's start with the switches. So this is where you enter the basement. So there's a switch upstairs that turns on this light. And then you come down and there's a switch over there by this back door uh, that also does this light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the switch up there and I'm going to install another switch right here on this wall. So this switch, the switch upstairs will turn on the lights. Uh, to this room. All right, so the next thing I do is I just kind of walk through the whole space and I figure out how am I going to turn these lights on so it's fluid. So like I said, you hit the one upstairs, you walk down, and then the switch right here, you hit and it'll turn the lights off. But you're going to need another switch right next to it so that you can turn the next room on as you're walking. All right, so you walk in, you hit this switch. Now these lights will turn on, but let's say you wanted to leave through this mechanical space you're gonna need an area to turn them off as you leave. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install another switch right here. They're relatively close to each other, but that's okay because by code, as you enter, you need to be able to turn the switches off. And then as you leave, you need to be able to turn the switches on or off. All right, now the next part is the outlets. So per code, you need an outlet every 12 feet or so. I'll probably put an outlet right in the middle of this wall. And then I'm gonna put an outlet probably right around here on this wall, and that'll satisfy this uh, requirement. And then over on this side, I'm probably going to put an outlet right about here. And I'll measure it out. I may need one here too, but we will see. Then over here in this room, I'll put an outlet right on the middle of this wall. Or maybe over to the right if, um, if you decide to put a couch here. So right around here, I'll put an outlet. There's already an existing outlet on this wall here cut in. It's just not tied in. So that wall's good. And then this half wall down here. I'm probably going to install two. I'm going to install one right around here. But like I said, I have to measure between this one and this one and make sure it's not more than 12 feet. So one here, and then I'll probably put one right around here. And then I'll put the last outlet in the middle of this wall. And then for this small bathroom, all I'm going to do is I'll probably put a, a block right here and I'll put a new work box here, probably a two gang. And one section of the box will have a switch. And I think I'm just going to put an exhaust fan up here with a light. So you turn the switch on, the exhaust fan turns on and the light at the same time. And then to the right of that, I'll have a 20 amp GFCI outlet. And then over around here, uh, it's probably a good location for a TV. Um, but I'm not going to install anything new work. I'm going to leave some wires up in the ceiling uh, right around here. And we'll probably just snake those in later because we don't know exactly where it's going to get installed because we don't have the TV bracket. It's an, it's an easy job to just snake in. It's really no big deal. So to complete this, you're going to need a drill with an auger bit, uh, some wire, I'm using some 14.2 for the outlets, 14.3 uh, for the three-way switches that I'm installing, and then I have some 12.2 for that 20 amp outlet. You're going to need new work boxes, staples, and that's about all you really need to uh, rough a basement. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first step, you have to measure out your boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this. So this outlet right here is, let's see, six feet is about right here. So let's measure another six feet. That's about right here. So I'm going to put another outlet right here. And the standard height for outlets is 18 inches to center. All right, I'm going to measure the next one. So that first outlet we marked is right about there. So let's measure 12 feet. 12 feet is right here. So I'm going to put another outlet right there. You can lay out outlets however you want based on your needs. But this particular basement, there's really no need for any outlets in a specific spot. So I'm going to do it as cheap as possible and write to code. All right, so one there. And when I mark it, I put a little arrow on the side of the stud that the box is going to mount to. All right, let's measure the last one. So it's about, let's say nine and a half feet. So nine, 10, 11, so we have two and a half feet of space. So this outlet is going to go right here and it's got to go to this side it's really close all right so outlet here outlet there and an outlet there and it's very close but everything 
is to code. All right, so over here, you need one like six feet from a door. So I'm gonna put an outlet right here and then I'm gonna put one right on the other side of the wall on this stud to satisfy uh, that wall space inside that room. All right, and then in here, I'm probably gonna put an outlet right around here to satisfy this six feet. And then this wall is definitely longer than 12 feet. So I'm gonna put another one right here and I think that's plenty. All right, so now the switches. It's gonna be a two gang box right here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it here. And whenever you install a switch box near a doorway, let's say I was going to install it right here, you'd have to put a couple pieces of two by four as spacing uh, because of the door trim. A big mistake that a lot of people make is they mount it right to the first stud here and then the door trim um, impedes inside the box and your plate looks horrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mount it to this side and I don't have to do any blocking. And the standard height is 48 inches and all these heights are to center. And then right here, a single gang's going in. And again, I'd have to put a piece of blocking here to make sure the switch is over far enough because of the door trim. I'm gonna go ahead and just mount it to this stud right here. 48 inches, right there. And now the bathroom wall. Uh, this one, it's only two pieces of two by four, so I'm gonna add some blocking on this one. All right, so this is just a standard nail-on box. And what you do is these boxes have little tabs here and the tabs are set up for half inch sheetrock. And you need to make sure these tabs, when you stick it on this piece of wood, are touching the, um, the two by four here so that the box sticks out a half inch. And then you go ahead and you just hammer it on. All right, so for the switch boxes, I just got these ones that you screw on right in the front. They're pretty easy to use. So you get that hole right there so you can see your mark, so it's right on the center. And then you just put some screws in. All right, I'm just gonna finish off um, all the outlet boxes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling these studs out. Uh, for all these wires. But this particular setup, I got my switches. So that box is gonna get two 14-3 wires. And then this outlet is gonna have a couple wires going to it. One's gonna go here, and then it's gonna loop all the way over to here. So normally you just drill right above it, uh, but this is the main beam for the house. And if I were to drill like a three quarter inch hole right through one of those, um, I don't know, two by eights, I would destroy uh, the integrity of at least one of those. Unfortunately, I have no choice but to go the long way. So what I'm gonna do, over here so i have to drill through every one of these studs and then i'm going to come up through there um, above the ceiling all right so now i have to drill through this way uh, to get to this last outlet and then for the outlets along here uh, i'm not going to drill anything i'm going to run the wire over and i'm going to attempt to staple it right here along here so the wire will come along, go down to the outlet, come back up, and I wanna keep it nice and high because this whole wall is gonna be insulated and I don't want a bunch of wires running through here uh, blocking where the insulation is gonna go. So for these outlets over here, I'm gonna run some 14-2 Romex and I'm just gonna use some standard Romex uh, staples. The fastest and easiest way to do it, I think, is you just pull loops and you keep twisting as you pull the loops to make sure um, you know the loops stay the same size. And just keep twisting and pulling. And then you take your bundle of wire and you just walk it out. All right, so I drilled a hole up here. Uh, this is how I'm gonna get into this wall. So I'm gonna start by running it through there. All right, so that's enough. And then with uh, 14.2 Romex, uh, the code states you need to support Romex every four and a half feet on a run, and you also need to support Romex uh, 12 inches from a box. So you kind of just leave the wire like this until you get both wires over, uh, and then you can staple it. So I'm going to cut this wire, and I'm going to leave it above the ceiling, and I'm going to end up installing a junction box uh, to feed this existing outlet over here, and then I'll use that junction box to run a new wire over for this TV in the future. Uh -oh. Hustle out, hustle every single day I 
be making moves till I'm buried in my grave uh, Through the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway And in the driveway, is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain You never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredients, believe me Better see what the negativity But I just slide right by that energy even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never ran, said a no, man, I still go Go, 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 go Alright, so now I'm gonna run another wire up out of this outlet through this, this 2x4 over here and I'm gonna run it right over here by this ductwork on the other side and I'm gonna install another junction box uh, just because I have a wire that needs to come over this way and the wire is gonna come back out and it's gonna hit this outlet but I don't wanna have to come all the way back over all the way this way, come back out um, just to hit the outlet over here uh, so I'm gonna put a junction point here so I can just run one wire over here and snake it in when I'm ready and then one more wire over here. Go, 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 go. You got a mind, but even that could change. You could flip the gray matter like some batter in your brain. That's why I say, fake it till you make it, eh? And if you play that game, then you just might make a change. Rearrange all the bad to okay. Take the worst stuff, say, and turn them to a game. Take the best stuff, say, and put them on display. On repeat in your brain till you're feeling no more pain. Uh. Never slow yourself down, you can do some more. Push past start the pain and you'll find the door. Open it up and finally explore everything that you thought you could never do before. Uh. And even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no, man, I still go. Go, 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 So now I need to get a 14.3 from this switch box to this switch box. But like I said, it's a little tough because I don't want to drill any holes through these main beams. So I have to loop all the way around, come through this way, and then down. So this existing switch over here, I need to move this three-way switch to here. So I'm going to have to kill the circuit, yank this wire all, all the way out, and then like I said, go through this long way and stick the switch right here. And this whole process is going to take a little while, so I'll probably just do a time lapse. Hey, I got something, something to say I'm just so sick of hearing everyone complain I know it's tough and I know there's pain But hitting bottom is the only way to change So I'll keep hustling, you keep struggling Bitch, I'm humbling, keep mumbling I'll keep doubling, you keep bluffing You've got nothing, I'll keep hustling all right, I have one more wire to run, which is the 12-2. It's gonna go to this box right here for the GFCI outlet in the bathroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that, and then all my wires will be ran. Just too scared to act I'll leave the knife right in my back So I'll keep 
keep hustling, you keep struggling, bitch. I'm humbling, keep mumbling, I'll keep doubling, you keep bluffing, you've got nothing, I'll keep hustling. So all my wires are ran. This one right here, a little switch to the left is actually live. Uh, it's part of that three-way system that's existing. And eventually it'll do the lights in this room. But yeah, everything else I need to cut in. I will go over that whole process. And then one thing I just wanted to mention, when you're stapling wires um, on a stud, you gotta make sure that your staples are at least an inch and a quarter away from the edge of the stud. The reason for that is they don't want any sheetrock screws going into the wire. So if you can't make it at least an inch and a quarter, you're gonna have to buy, um, they have like these clips where you can stack the wires, uh, staples won't work. So like something like this, uh, this is really close. So I had to extend this wall out a little bit because of this metal beam right here. I have my inch and a quarter, but it's very, very close. And then one more tip, when you're running wires through studs, uh, I wouldn't go more than three wires uh, per hole uh, just because of um, derating and heat issues. So if I had to run one more wire through here, I would just drill a whole new section of holes and run that wire through it. All right, let's go over uh, cutting in a box. Uh, so this is just a regular outlet. Uh, I have a 14-2 coming in, 14-2 going out. So let's go ahead and cut this in. So you gotta hit this knockout. Sometimes they don't come out on their own, so grab it with your pliers. All right, so you gotta strip your wire. So I just use a knife, strip it a little bit with the knife. Make sure you don't go past this paper. And just score the sides. And you pull. Put the feet in, the feet out, same deal. Cut that outer sheathing. Make sure you don't go past the paper. Score the sides. Peel, peel, and pull. And you leave one really long um, because we're gonna use a green wire nut on this. And you can put these in the same hole. All right, so now you want to staple this at least 12 inches from the box. And then that white sheathing, you want to make sure you have about a quarter inch or so in there, but you don't want it too long. All right, so twist the wires so they're nice and flat. Make sure you get your quarter inch of sheathing in there. Take your staple. Hold the wires up top there. Staple them in. All right, next step, you wanna do your grounds. So what I do is I push the ground down, lift the left, rest of the wires up. Push the ground down, lift the rest of the wires up. And then you go deep into the box and you start twisting them. You twist them uh, clockwise. And you twist them enough where you have a decent amount out of the box so you can grab it with your pliers. Squeeze with your pliers. And you twist a little bit more, make it tight. And then you take the shorter one and you cut it just like that, nice and close. Take a green wire nut, slide it on. Green wire nut has a hole in it. And then you go ahead and twist your wire nut on. Push that in way in the back. And then what I do is I grab all my wires, need about six inches out of the box. You cut them. And you don't need to do anything else because these two blacks will go on the outlet. These two whites will go on the outlet. And then this green will go on the outlet. So I take it. I'll twist it just a little bit like that. And then I bend it into the box. And then you push it way in because um, the sheet rocker might have a roto zip and you don't want those wires to get hit by the roto zip. And that's it. That's all set, that's roughed in. It's ready for sheetrock. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut in this uh, three-way switch. Uh, we have a three wire, we have a feed in, and then we have um, 
a wire going to the light. You now when you have more than three wires or so, it starts getting confusing. Uh, so you start marking your uh, row maxes. So this one I marked it light. Uh, so I know which one's going to uh, go up and turn the lights on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in. This will probably be the last one that I cut in uh, real time. And then um, I'll do a time lapse for everything else, just so you can uh, see the whole process. <laughs> Placing this white to this black because I'm gonna set it up like this old switch over here. It was a dead ended three way. So I ran a three wire over. So this hot wire is gonna go travel through this white over to the other switch box. And then the three way switch will bring the power over on these travelers. And then these travelers will go up to the light up in the ceiling. So usually you don't splice to a white, uh, but in this particular case, because of the existing wiring, um, I'm just gonna keep it the same way. Uh, but anything new, like brand new, you'd have to run a five wire and splice on the blue wire uh, for that traveler. But I'm just gonna keep the existing wiring the same. So I'll strip the common for a three-way, uh, just so when the time comes, let's say there's spray paint all over this or plaster in here or whatever, and you can't really see what's what anymore. I'll know that this is the common. So this goes on your common screw in a three-way, this goes on the travelers. All right, that's it. So that's how you cut in a, uh, a switch box. All right, so the rough electrical is all set. Uh, we have outlets to code. We have our switches over here to code. When you walk in, you can turn the lights on. When you walk out, you can turn the lights off. Walk through here. If you go into the mechanical space, you can turn these lights off and vice versa. Uh, I just wanna show you a couple other things. Uh, this is a little trick. Um, usually I use spray paint, but I use some Sharpie right here. Uh, it's a good idea to just mark the floor where your outlets are. Uh, so when they sheet rock, uh, if they miss an outlet, you know exactly where it is and you can cut it out. Also, this is the nail plate that I installed. So no screws are gonna penetrate through this and hit these wires. Also right here is a good example of that inch and a quarter code I was talking about. So these wires are right in the center. I couldn't put all these wires on this side. I had to uh, switch it up just because we need that inch and a quarter here so that no screws hit these wires when they're sheet rocking. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. I hope this video gave you a good idea on what it takes to rough walls um, on a small project like this. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll be posting more videos just like this.